Takimi Lounge, which is over there. The Takimi Lounge, yeah. of course. And no house is complete without a Takimi Lounge. The show's called Life Saving Distractions, which is essentially what we all do to validate our human experience rather than just being in the now and being conscious of yourself. So that's why we got LSD there. <laughs> which I was guessing life-saving life yeah. distractions. Oh, life-saving distractions. Yeah. Yeah. It's advertising within the art. He had a place called the Silver Factory, which was in New York. It was just a magnet for all sorts of alternative people and huge creativity. Bob Dylan, The Velvet Underground, Lou Reed, Debbie Harry, David Bowie, all, loads of people just came out of that. And because one of the founding members, John Cale, was born just across the road here. I'm trying to imitate the same ethos of that creativity. In I the chapel. understand that, yes. So that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. And also get a small festival every year, which is to celebrate that. So mm. who's Johnny Xerox? Um, Johnny Xerox is a character who was conceived on a photocopying machine at an office party, and thus he was destined to multiply. An imitation is the, is the highest form of flattery. So there's really no original thought. We're just incredibly privileged to ride on the shoulders of giants, really, and interpret things in our own way. you've created here is pretty unique, isn't it? It's like amazing. It's, it's opening up worlds that I haven't begun to get my head around yet. It's amazing. I, I can't think of the creativity you've put into mm, making this. Me. And it needs other people who are motivated and interested. But, you know, to discuss other societies or world history or something. I think there are many people who are interested and there's many young people who would be really but, interested. The Khan's chief deities are Dardani Penu, the Earth Goddess, and Buddha Penu, the Sky God. Their main culture hero is a woman, or female being, whom some Khans call Nirantali, who seems to be a human incarnation of the Earth Goddess. In the beginning, there was nothing but water. Nirantali Kapantali emerged to the earth surface at Sapagana. After her came other gods and the first humans, who were cons. But how could humans live in all that water? They went to Nirantali and begged her for help. Eventually the water sank down and rock emerged. But there still was no earth until Nirantali produced it. Some say she got it from her hair. Some say she was angry and spat and her spit turned into white ants which excreted the earth. And others say she sent the cons to search for earth. And when they couldn't find it, in despair they besought a mountain of rock and scratched it with their nails like bears until it took pity on them and they could excavate earth. They took four handfuls of earth, black, white, red and yellow, which Nirantali told them to throw in the four directions. Now the earth was spread over the rock, but it still wasn't firm, so they set up a bamboo pole and sacrificed a cow, a buffalo and a pig before it, and the earth became hard and dry. The bones of their victims became rocks, and the hair became trees and grass. Nirantali created other creatures and plants from beeswax and the dirt on her body.
universe of creation myths that that has such such graphic, beautiful images of it coming out of her fingernails. Because the Earth Goddess demands blood and human blood, it's very controversial. So the British set up a special agency for suppressing human sacrifice. And that mm. just gives a more dramatic beginning of what happened to every tribe of people. Mm. And the first title wasn't Sacrificing People, it was The Sacrifice of Human Being. Because the, the double entendre there is like, human sacrifice was horrendous, but the British were outlawing it because they wanted a monopoly on the taking of human life by the state. And now the scale of human sacrifice, but we don't call it that anymore, is unbelievable. Indian history starts with Ashoka's conquest of the Kalinga. We were a democratic people, they put up a massive fight. Ashoka himself says 100,000 were killed, and many times that number died of famine and everything afterwards. And he implies that he repents for that, but he still asserted the conquest. So the Khans retreated from many areas to the interior areas, and they have that legacy because everything in Orissa is now the Kalinga Institute of Social Sciences or the Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences or, you know, the Kalinga, it's the pride of Orissa and, but with no consciousness that it was these people, you know. You know, people from Bengal, they are like big devotees of Kali. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my father was like, the, Kali used to be the goddess and uh, you have this flower called Hibiscus? Oh yeah, I love hibiscus. So that is offered to Kali and um, they garlanded like um, you know, big uh, this uh, hibiscus uh, mala or garland. And, uh, so that is something which is uh, synonymous with the goddess. Sanskrit is not a language, they're, div they're divine vibrations, so everything is a vibration. John Lennon saying, you know, make love not war, or, or things like that, he was, he was encouraging activists in a way, peace activists in that case. Well at that time there was the fair weather movement. They blew themselves up whilst making a, making a bomb. Really? Literally? Yeah. And so that was the end of them? The end of them and then they were discovered like that. And because they, they started off by, let's say, sabotaging. They started off by sabotaging. Darkness is, has no independent existence and light has no shadows. It's a thing of balance and uh, a yin and yang where there is this black dot in the whole white uh, zone and there's this white dot in the whole black zone and how mm, human beings can live or coexist with nature without really uh, dominating. dominating it. Yeah. Darkness gets a bad name, but darkness... This is also like Newton thought all come of colour come from white, mm. but actually Newton was completely wrong. Mm. Colour comes from a combination of black and white, and the black, people don't know what it is now to live in darkness. Blanking out the other that is also an equal part of life, and associated with the feminine, so, you know, bringing back more the feminine power in a way. It's quite fascinating when you look at nature, how ruthless it is. We all seem to think that nature just rocks along and everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is fine, and all, just look at nature. My God, you look at nature, it's nature absolutely... Nature made in tooth and claw, but that's how Darwin was misused by the capitalists to justify ruthlessness, really, mm. because he also talked a lot about cooperation between species.
the buzzword now is algorithms, right? We all share the same algorithm. So an algorithm is a, a system or a, a pattern which will take you to a destination. And that's what consciousness does, what some people call moksha or liberation. So we're getting glimpses of all these things from their divine source. It's quite amazing. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Everything to, to, to jump up and down with joy. We've got the capacity to bring silicon carbon together and we create an all, a whole different kind of reality through intelligence. Mm -hmm. And we're only just on the brink of it. Mm -hmm. And now AI is exploding. So we're going to get AI and different ways of authentic authentication through things like the blockchain, which people are really resisting. But um, it's just a natural cause of all things, just like silicon and carbon come together and we've got computers. It's all good, Felix. Honest. I Honestly, know. Just, we're in so. a virtual reality already, I know, John. <laughs> I really think so. Isn't it? It's just yeah. the beginning. Just with, the beginning. With, with, commercially speaking, we're probably three Christmases away from everyone owning a, a, a VR headset. Then when you look at KISS, you, you know what KISS is, the Killing it Institute of Social Sciences, like the world's biggest boarding school. You see 30,000 children, pink for girls, blue for boys, and all in their lines, and Hindrit fur and all that. And... They're completely, you know, the brainwashing is pretty blatant there. But here it's through this world, it's a kind of intelligence agency's control of the media for a very, very long time, more and more and more and more, mm -hmm. since the Second World War, until you come to Syria and Ukraine. And people are just completely brainwashed about what's happening, to, to me. But well, if you say it, it becomes very divisive because... Most people can't see outside the media spin. So when you say we're all living in AI, well, yes, and I'm shocked at the extent to which I am, but, you know, I'm certainly in big resistance to the, the enterprise on the whole. You've got a family and kids and you've got, you're yeah. in the system. You accept an authority because, you know, you can't question everything. You know, you go to a pharmacist and you buy paracetamol or something, you're not going to read through everything. You accept that there's authorities and they're working for you with best intentions. So that's part of being in the system. And I can understand people accepting authorities like that. But then when you start to get more data and more information and you start to understand different things, then where's the fervour and the, and, and the concern that these people have to look at the new data and the new things coming out? Everything you need to know how to be a hippie. Stu always puts the time mark as 1968 or 69, so he pretty much lives yeah. back there. So who's Stuart Hampton? Stu. The guy. He wrote man. this. He did, yeah. Well, how amazing. <laughs> I'm local, but um, definitely come out in church, isn't it? Like, I'm, I'm aware of Armourford as well, yeah. so we're from St. Natalie. So we're about 10 miles. Yeah, we're about 10 miles out, so, yeah, we're aware yeah, of, like, 10, miles. like, Glen Armand and the area. Feel good, do you? Relaxed, yeah. warm. Yeah. yeah, good energy. Yeah, that's a good energy. Definitely. Allowing any thoughts and feelings to arise and pass. Anything arise and pass. And maintaining that sense of connection with right here, right now.